Are we here? Yes, we are going live. Every time that I go live, I'm so happy. Today is October 15, 2010. As happy as I can be, I can hear a starman in the control room saying, 10 minutes, no, 10 seconds to live, 5 seconds to live. Have fun, ladies. Enjoy it. I'm so glad to be back. I'm having my sponsors right here, D'Amico's Coffee, the best coffee in town. Madonia's Brothers Bakeries, your vitamins, and tonight I'm, I'm wearing my nice sequence top designed by a beautiful, exquisite fashion designer, Katerina Lankova. I just want to get up to show you guys. I'm not bragging and I'm not stripping either, okay? I just, I want to make that clear for the record, but I just feel there's a little too cold. Look at this. Go up. I'm out of frame. Like I said, I'm not going naked. Don't worry about it. Look at the back. You see that? I couldn't believe it. When I picked it up today, this afternoon, I said, I'm not going to wear that. It's not my style. But I said, what the hell? You got to take some risk. You got to have fun. I'm not taking my clothes off. I just want to make that clear to everybody. And tonight, we have our special guest, the filmmaker, creator, Kiara C. Jones. Thank you very much for coming Thank by. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yeah, Thank sure. You. And I love your top. Thank you. I was like, you know, women, we get a little oh should i wear it should i not wear it because it's not really my thing but i said let me ah let me breathe now i have the sequences i feel that i'm floating you see that background you see those background windows? oh yeah, i'm just and we're matching i have a little i have a bling you have a little bling yeah we okay. twinkle together i know i know <laughs> i know um october is domestic violence awareness month and i see your documentary last night i enjoyed it very much a documentary um, that pretty much I took my notes and we're gonna show a little clip no three different clips uh, in a little while but we're gonna talk about your transition because I know that you're from the Bronx that you're a poet a hip-hop artist so I'm wondering how you made that transition to filmmaking um, I always felt like um, I had something to say so you know when I was young I was writing a lot of course hip-hop was you know the thing to do so we all tried our, our Attempts. We made our attempts at the game, you know. I had my little crew I used to run with. We used to rhyme and that sort of thing. But um, when I when I started um, developing a career, you know, trying to make some money, that wasn't really working out for me financially. So I started in broadcasting and I did radio and like television. I read, yes, and you've been traveling everywhere. Traveled all over the world with that. And then I did live shows and events, you know, concerts and, and installs of big shows and that sort of thing. And then. Um, I was actually living in Las Vegas, and I wasn't really happy there. I had a big, beautiful why, house. Why? Why you were not happy? I don't, you know, it just wasn't the place for me, you know. But I had all the things that you, they say you're supposed to have. I had a nice car, I had a nice house, I had a great job, worked for a really great company, but it just wasn't me. So I said, I want to move out of here. And the only place that I could think to go was New York because it's been calling me to come back here my whole life and to be here as an adult. This, to me, is the most fertile soil that you can be in as an artist to try and grow because there's so much energy here, there's so much culture, so much influence. Every so much day beauty. you walk outside and you can be inspired by just being. You know, even on the windiest, coldest, rainiest days, there's always something that New York will feed you. So I wanted to come back to New York, so I decided to, um, I needed a really good excuse to sort of give up my life and leave Las Vegas. Uh -huh. So I applied for graduate school, and I applied for graduate film school. Uh, and they have two schools here in, in New York, at Columbia and New York University. And NYU. Uh -huh. And I got accepted to NYU, and here we are. That's fantastic. <laughs> no, it's just the filmmaking is a profession that you really have to love it, like acting. It's, it's, it's a craft that you get to love with all your heart. Absolutely. There's a lot of obstacles and challenges. Uh, Absolutely. This way. is not a, you know, it's a grad folk program, and it's an ex 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 it is an expensive program. Yes. And it's not the type of program that you're going to get out and walk into a job. Right. You know, it's not like, you know, if you're a lawyer or, you know, a dentist or something like that, you're going to walk out of your school and, you know, be able to have a, a, a great career. It's, it's all really about what you put into it. Right. So um, you have to love filmmaking. You have to love storytelling. You have to love people. You have to, you have to love yourself. There has to be a place in you that you know those days when you wake up and nobody's paying attention, uh -huh. that you're still going to be able to, like, get up and keep doing that thing. This is the hardest work I've ever done in my life working for myself. I've never worked so hard. Um, what have you had learned so far? <sighs> what have I learned so far? Um, I've learned that I love collaborating. 
Um, filmmaking is an art that is, it's, it's, it requires you to have really great, talented friends um, and collaborators to work with. It's not like painting where you can just go in your studio and lock yourself, yourself in and do it by yourself. You're, I mean, you kind of can with all the, the advances in technology, but it, you're really not going to be able to do this by yourself. The, you, the best way to do it is to have a group of people that you can work with. I mean, even the actors, I mean, you know, I, I was thinking, you know, if you, if you said, oh, I could do it all by myself, you're going to act in it yourself, you're going to direct it, you're going to shoot it, you're going to shoot and act and edit and it's, you need other people. So um, collaborating has been um, one of my one of my most favorite adventures in in this experience um, because every person brings a really special and unique ingredient to the project that without them being there you know your film would not be what it is today so when those credits roll at the end it's really a special you know like heartwarming feeling to me that each one of these people gave a little so piece much. of themselves to help this thing come yeah, to life. To make it happen. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and let's talk about uh, this documentary. Okay, the, this, the documentary that we're working on now, we're in the final stages of production, it's called Serenity. Mm -hmm. um, it is about victims of domestic violence and abuse that have to go through the shelter system in New York. Um, the director, his name is Lapo Melzi, and he um, garnered a relationship. It's so funny, uh, this whole business is about connections and networking and you know making friends and who you know and all that sort of thing. He garnered a relationship with a gentleman by the name of um, Matthew Okibiyi who runs the African uh, American Planning Commission. He's the, um, the executive director um, and uh, happens to run Serenity House also. And Matthew was looking for some sort of, of visual um, sort of commercial to, to put on his website to sort of promote, um, to get people, to help people be more aware of child abuse and domestic violence and that right. sort of thing. And Lapo had created this piece, it's called Paper Child. It's a